Hello, welcome to Bare Metal Machine. I'm Jeff Audia. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to machine an arc using the Cartesian display. And now remember, this is manual machining, so we're never talking about making any particularly curvy parts. And uh, just like you can't uh, linearly interpolate along an angled line uh, using hand cranks, obviously there's no human equivalent for circular interpolation. Um, but for uh, one-offs or prototypes or a small run of parts with a little patience and some finesse, you can actually do a pretty respectable job. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if certain people could actually uh, develop a level of finesse beyond what I'm going to show today. Okay, so here's the part we're going to be machining. Uh, it's just this little block with a, a cavity in it and uh, it has this one curved corner on it. Okay, now here's the machining setup. Uh, we're just using a vise with a half inch end mill and uh, here's the Cartesian display with the part already loaded into it and ready to go. Okay, so the machining strategy is going to be simple enough. I'm just going to take that half inch end mill and I'm going to machine around the perimeter. I'm going to climb around it and then I'm going to go to the inside and I'm just going to machine out all this material and I'll leave about you know 10 or 20 thousandths on every surface. Um, and then you'll notice that when, when I get to the arc, to machine around the arc, I'm going to do the only thing that I really can do, which is essentially, you know, uh, etch-a-sketch my way around that arc in order to approximate it. And then when I go back to finish the arc, I'm basically going to do the same thing, except I'm going to make much finer uh, increments. In fact, I thought it would be uh, kind of useful to use an actual etch-a-sketch toy uh, to illustrate what I mean. All right, so here's like a template of the part on here. And um, let's see. So here's the tool, right? And I'm going to uh, machine around the part. All right, I'm going to climb mill my way around the part. And then when I come to the arc, uh, you know, I'll stop like right at the tangency of the arc uh, in that line. And then I'm just going to move a little bit in X, and then I'm going to move Y down until I just touch the arc, till I just kiss it. I'm going to put the arc on radar. That way I know when the tool is, uh, is just touching it. Okay, so I'm going to move delta X and then a little bit in Y until I just touch the arc. Delta X, move Y down until I just kiss the arc. Delta X, move Y down until I just kiss the arc. And so on until I've done the whole thing. All right? And uh, so it's going to be the same thing, except I'm just going to use much finer increments. Uh, these delta x's are going to be smaller, like maybe 20 thousandths of an inch. And then I'll drive y down until the tool just touches the arc, or, you know, gets within about a thousandth of an inch or so. And uh, you'll see, it'll actually look pretty good. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so it shouldn't be difficult to imagine what this arc's going to end up looking like. Okay, so here's a, a blown up view of the interior and the exterior of the arc. Uh, what you're going to end up with is simply this. Uh, highly exaggerated, of course, and as, as exaggerated as my uh, Etch-a-Sketch example. Okay, and the interior is going to look like this. All right, so what do you have here? Each one of these uh, little cusps, if you will, is a location of where you brought the tool in contact with the arc. Remember, the arc is going to be on radar, right? So this will be red. So you'll have moved some delta x, right? And then you'll move y down until it just contacts the arc, or gets within, say, a thousandth of an inch or so, however close you want to get. Okay, and then you'll move another delta x, Right? And then you'll move Y down again, and you'll again be touching here. Right? And you'll have that contact point. Right? Delta X, and then move Y down, and you'll be touching here at that contact point. Same with the interior. Um, right? Here is your contact point. You'll have moved some uh, delta Y probably, and then you move over delta X, until you just contact it. Then you'll move delta Y and, and then delta X again and then you'll be here and you'll be contacting here. And then you'll go delta Y and then you'll go delta X again and then you'll be contacting here. 
right? And so you're going to be leaving like these little pieces of pie, right? So you, you know, your, your surface is actually going to be uh, bigger than it's supposed to be, I suppose, the wall thickness. Like if you were to measure it, you know, from here to here, uh, the wall thickness would appear to be thicker than it should be. Um, so, but you can make these deltas as small as you want, uh, whatever your patience will allow and, and whatever your time constraints will allow. And you can actually make it look as smooth as you like. And um, uh, another thing to note is that the, the, the bigger the cutter you use, the better result you'll get. So, I mean, imagine trying to do this with, a, with an end mill that was like a sixteenth of an inch in diameter. It would be insane. You, you, you couldn't possibly make enough small delta x's and delta y's, it would just look terrible. Uh, whereas a bigger tool, especially on the interior, as the tool radius approaches the actual radius of the, of the geometry, the better result you're going to get. Because the less places you're going to have to... Uh, like if you had a tool that was almost exactly the size of this radius, you'd only have to bring that tool in and kiss it in maybe two or three places, and it would be a beautiful surface. The exterior, uh, it wouldn't be quite as nice. Right? But you would at least get much broader uh, of these cusps, and it would be, uh, it would, you know, it would probably appear a lot flatter. So you want to use the biggest tool you can. All right? And um, even if it means changing the tool to make that finish cut, I know it's a pain, especially on a bridge port, but uh, you'll, you'll get a better result with a bigger tool. Okay, so what does this delta x, delta y process actually look like on the Cartesian display itself? Let's have a look. Okay, here we go. So, we got the part geometry all loaded into the display. The origin is somewhere down here in this lower left corner of the block. And um, I'm going to give myself a couple pieces of helper geometry uh, so that I can easily see the, uh, the points of tangency between like these horizontal and vertical lines and the arc itself. It could be helpful. Okay, so let's just imagine that we had just been finishing this line. Hit the find. And I'll get my tool within tolerance of it. All right, close enough. So let's imagine we were just finishing this line, and we stop at about the tangent point of this arc. All right, and now, so I uh, put the arc on radar, and now I simply move a delta x, and now you see I'm almost four thousandths away from it. So I bring y down to uh, just kiss the arc. Close enough. Delta x, bring y down to just touch the arc. Right. For delta x, move y down. In real life, I'll be actually doing smaller delta x's. Right. Bring y down to just touch the arc. Right. Close enough. Let's zoom in on it a little bit. So, delta x, move y down. Right to just touch the arc. Close enough. Delta X, move Y down to just kiss the arc again. Right? Okay. Delta X, move Y down. Delta X, move Y down. Okay, so we just do this over and over again until we uh, have a machine, the arc as finely as we like. And that's the process. Now, whether you move delta x's or delta y's, it's a matter of choice. Uh, sometimes delta y is better, uh, and then you move uh, x to touch the arc, or vice versa. Uh, it's a matter of preference, and it uh, really doesn't matter, but that's the process. Okay? All right, now, so now let's get into actually machining this part. Uh, I had to machine the whole part anyways, but uh, so I'm just going to kind of zip through that really quickly and then uh, I might slow down when I get to the arc parts, but this is what I'm going to be doing.
Okay, I got the part all cleaned up now. Let's see how we did. It actually doesn't look half bad, right? I mean, I could cut my deltas in half maybe and get it even smoother. But, you know, this only took about, uh, let's say, 12 to 15 minutes to do. And uh, so, yeah, it'd be a little longer, but it might look a little better too. You know, a lot of cases, um, you know, you can just do a secondary operation and uh, with some hand finishing, you can smooth these things out even more. But I think this actually looks pretty good. Let's check it out dimensionally just for kicks, even though that's really not part of this exercise. Uh, 2.232, right? And I got 2.230, maybe one and a half. Uh, let's see, 2.56. All right, let's see. I got 2.562, okay? The wall thicknesses should be 0.1. Let's take a look there. I got 0.102, maybe 103. The arc is like maybe 101, 100 on the nose and maybe 102. So dimensionally, this thing is actually pretty good. Um, Here's another one that I did a little bit earlier, and uh, it actually doesn't look as good as the second one, but it's still not half bad. I'm pretty happy with it. And here, here's some other examples of ones that I've done. Um, this part here is not even a complete 90 degree arc, it's a little bit different. And uh, this might be an example of one that I did with a slightly bigger cutter. It actually looks pretty darn good. And um, here's yet another example. Right. My deltas were probably smaller and or the cutter might have been a little bigger. Okay, so um, anyway, that's, uh, that's how to cut an arc using the Cartesian display. And again, for a, for a one-off or a prototype or uh, just a short run of parts, uh, you can do a pretty respectable job of cutting an arc. Okay, see you next time.